episode of My Car Shop. This is episode 18 on the 47 Ford Street Rod. I am out here enjoying the sunshine this afternoon, getting ready to uh, do some sanding on this fender. This is the driver's side fender. It was the one that had the most work on it yesterday. I want the other one to uh, dry a little bit more in the sun and shrink up before I start sanding uh, so that we don't have any issues with sand scratches and stuff showing up later. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of dry sanding on this 220 grit just to kind of break the surface on it. Then I'll get into wet sanding with 320 on it. And uh, hopefully everything turns out nice and flat and we'll be able to get right on to shooting it with another coat of primer. And then maybe by the end of the week we'll have both of these done and get some paint on them. Uh, if you watch the other episode we put out today, uh, did some moving around, got the Pro Street car in the shop now. Be doing some work on that as we move forward to get it ready to drive this summer. Uh, but since it's nice out now and these fenders have been out here since this morning, it's time to uh, start doing some, some block sanding. So welcome to this episode of My Car Shop. Okay, so we're, here's where we're at. Let's get down in here onto the nitty gritty now. Front of this fender is phenomenal. I'm real happy with it, looks good. A Little bit of sand work to do there yet, but uh, not too worried about that. You can just see there's a little bit of orange peeling in there where I just didn't sand it quite enough. Feels good down here. There might be a minor imperfection there. A Little bit of orange peel there, that's gotta be sanded out yet. Down here we got a couple little things. If you can see, there's a spot get my finger in there first right there there's a little teeny pit that needs to be fixed and there's another one right there that needs to be fixed it's hard to see out here because of the glare on my phone right there we go so not much it feels nice and smooth I don't feel any waves the curves are great there's there's only one thing that's a, a real well it's not a real problem but uh, right up here and you won't be able to see it till I get it in the shop you can see where this graying area is that's fine that's just where it's leveling out, but there's a spot right there where there's just a, just a tiniest bit of a low spot. So I'm going to have to do a little work on that. I don't think I'm going to get that out by block sanding primer. Uh, but this fender is really turning out good. Of course, it needs another coat of primer uh, and then to be block sanded with 320 and 400. But what I did was I thought I had the time lapse going and... Uh, I was hand sanding it dry with 220 and a soft pad. Uh, I wasn't board sanding, I wanted to mention that, because this fender is flat, uh, so there was no reason to uh, sand it with a, in, in, in round panels, I would use that long sander you might have seen me use before, uh, but it's got a little flex to it. On real flat panels, I have three of those that are really hard, uh, including an electric or a pneumatic one, but this thing is looking phenomenal, so I'm really happy with the way it's turning out. So I'm going to get it back in the shop and uh, just check those spots to make sure the other fender is still out here drying. That one should be good to go. I'll know tomorrow, probably, if I'm up to it. I'm feeling pretty beat from this, but uh, do some wet sanding on that with 320 and then 400, and hopefully that thing's ready to go. I don't see obvious imperfections anywhere. There shouldn't be. That one was really in good shape, so uh, there was a couple little things I had to fix, but... So we're getting there, moving forward. Okay, there's definitely a spot in there if you watch closely. Little one there. And a bigger one there. It's hard to see it with the phone because it's a different perspective than, uh, so one right there. And one right there over on the left a little bit there. 
So from about here to around here is a spot that's just very, very minor, but uh, I can't live with it. I cannot live with that. So we got to fix that. And then of course we have a couple spots down here that I've got to do. So I'm going to work up some, uh, all this is going to take me to do here is I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, fill glaze here. It's going to be thinner than paper. And then I'm going to have to work that with a board sander a little bit and get that nice and flat. And then we'll, uh, I'm going to spot prime this, I think, rather than shooting the whole fender again. Uh, I'll probably shoot the bare metal spots. But other than that, that's all I'm going to do until I'm sure I've got that worked out. Uh, it's got to be perfect. I can't, I can't live with that. Everything else, if you look down at the prep saw, this is just so much easier. But everything else, if you look down, it looks just phenomenally good. I don't see anything in there at all. That's uh, water's drying a little bit, so it makes it a bit of a challenge. But you can see that, that horseshoe-shaped light right up in here. If you follow that back along that curve, other than where the water's drying. She's just looking outstanding. So it's just right up there, right? A little bit there and a big one right there. Now I can feel that with my fingers, but I like to see what it looks like because when this is shiny, once you paint it, that's gonna stand out. And uh, would it look bad? No, no, it would look, it would look respectable. But I don't want it to look respectable. I want it to look perfect. So there's enough things that will show up after you're done that you go, crap, I didn't see that. So when I see something like that, I know I've got to take care of it. Okay, so here's what we've got. It is absolutely paper thin. Um, that's filling everything in. I took, uh, you might have noticed in the slow-mo or the time lapse, I took my long board sander just to flatten everything out around here. I realized there might be a few high spots around there. So, uh, and it did. That little other spot that was right in here I think is gone now. And of course what I'm going to do is I'm going to prime this spot about that big with a pretty decent heavy coat of primer. And so once I've sanded this down, I'll prime that and any little imperfections that might be there will block out with the block sander. So I will have to board sand that. Um, I don't know if I'll need to use that big 18 inch one, but uh, I might have to use like an eight or 10 inch block. Oh, actually the best thing to do here would be a paint stick. So I'll probably use a paint stick on that, dry sand it gently till it's perfectly flat. And then hopefully I can still wet sand if there's enough material on there. While I was at it, I went down here Built those little spots and a couple other little imperfections I wasn't happy with. So uh, you can see what we got here, Barely, maybe. <laughs> Come over this way. Okay, yeah, there was a little spot in the corner there I wasn't completely satisfied with. And uh, a couple little, those were those little divots there. Otherwise, I think this is good. So um, what I'm gonna do is spot prime this, like in here, I'll touch that. Anywhere there's bare metal showing, as I said. And I'm de definitely going to lay it in pretty good right in here. Um, I don't think there's anything there. I might have to lay a little there. I'm, it's hard to tell on these round surfaces. They're very forgiving on one hand and they're not on another. So feeling a little something in there, but there's, there's not much I can do with, with, I mean, there's a lot I can do with it, but um, mm, you got compound angles here. I'm feeling a little something right here in the front also. Um, compound angles are tough because you've got it round this way and it's round this way. Uh, hopefully, yeah, it's feel, it feels okay, I think. I don't think anything's gonna show up there. It's got a little teeny bit, but you have to remember what I'm doing to this is way better than anything from the factory ever would have been on these cars. So um, it, I think it's gonna be respectable and I'll, I'll just soft pad that out a couple more times there. I'll probably hit that with a little extra primer tonight. I don't wanna shoot the whole fender yet, uh, I will have to, but I want to get these spots fixed before I put any more material on. So, there we go. Okay, we're going to do this in real time. So, this board is a little overkill for this, but it's got the right paper on it. It's got 320 on it. So, I'm only using it over the spot. I'm not really working it over the rest of the fender. 
And all I'm trying to do right now is just get that spot that I put that little bit of glaze in flat. It's getting there. The last thing I want to do is create a flat spot. I'm not sure that's the right choice for that. And I think I'm going to wet that with, um, what do I got in here? Some 320 probably. Yep, we got some 320 here that's wet. We'll do that and see how that works. This is the stuff I really don't like just because it's so detailed and so persnickety, but it makes or breaks a paint job. And if you don't get it right, it will stick out. And I promise you, especially right there, it's on the driver's side, it'll stick out to me like a sore thumb and it'll bug me forever. I'll hate myself for not fixing it. There we go. Yeah, there we go. I think that did it. And we didn't even get down to bare metal. That's awesome. Whoop. Yep, just the edges, which is normal. The low spot is gone. I don't see any bending in the light. I'm gonna get clean, paint, clean water on there, but. Oh yeah. Okay, so when, when you put fill in, there's always gonna be an edge. You can never get it out. I mean, you can't feel it. Um, but, but the edge is going to be there, and that's why you have to prime over it and block it to, to get that out of there. But if I look at the overall contour of this now, I'll bring you over here and let you look at it. There's just the edges, like I said, it's such minor. So if I get, you know, two or three good coats of primer on here and then block that out, probably with a paint stick, so that it works this all flat. So I'll have to prime this like in this big of an area to get this right. Uh, that should look phenomenal. Of course, that's gonna be all primed again. So uh, I think we're good there. So let's get down here and work on these little spots on the bottom now. And I think if I did them well enough, oh, I was gonna mention this too. Um, I did not use a Bondo spreader on that. When I'm trying to lay that glaze on there real thin, I actually, this is a me thing, I've never seen anybody do this before. I use real thin paper or real thin cardboard. This is a package from a chainsaw sharp sharpener that I keep little pieces of cardboard like this around. It's good and stiff, uh, makes an excellent, excellent edge. And when you're done, throw it away. You don't have to clean it. Okay, let's wet that uh, couple spots down here. See down there? Yeah, you can. Good. Not really worried about flatness here at this point. It's already really flat. I'm just trying to fill those little divots. Now I'm going after flatness, you can see. So I'm getting in there and working down that, that filler that I put in there. And remember, I'm going to be blocking this whole thing again with a flat block. So uh, what I'm doing there is good enough. I was never really taught how to do this. I just learned it over the years. I worked in a couple body shops and some hot rod shops. Picked up stuff from the guys that worked there. A lot of this stuff I just figured out on my own. But uh, I don't really know what I'm doing, but this is what I do. So My buddy Matt comes over and he'll help me a lot. Uh, has over the years and I've learned things from him obviously too because he does this stuff for a living he's a professional painter he's painted some absolutely unbelievable cars uh, actually I think right now he's painting semis so where I lay down a quarter paint he'll lay down five gallons oops hands were dirty okay I got an edge there that's not liking me too much People wonder why paint jobs, show quality paint jobs are so expensive. It's because the stuff takes a long, long time to do. Very long. There we go. Like that better. That's yeah, still a little high. Now we can block that flat though. 
That should do it. Yep, there we go. Okay, good. Yep, I want to a little spot right there. All I'm trying to do is get that flat with the surface around it because of that divot that was in there. I think that's got it. Okay. So for any of you body guys that are watching, you can criticize me in the comments, that's fine. Because I'm not trained to do this. I'll just make it up as I go. I've painted some show winning cars, they've turned out good, I can make them flat. I'm slow as I'll get out at this, although over years I've gotten a lot faster. I always felt bad for my son when he did his 69 Charger. He'd get it looking good, I'd go over and look at it and say, yep, do it again. Block it one more time, shoot it and block it one more time. He painted it black for his first car, that was very brave, but uh, it turned out it's better than anything I've ever painted, let's put it that way. You think this 47 Ford looks good, you ought to see that charger. Maybe he'll let me uh, do an episode on it sometime. Just an overview of what it was and that kind of stuff. He's way better at this than I am. He's got more patience than I do. I know you're probably listening, Joe. <laughs> He's a lot more detail-oriented, but his job has to be detail-oriented. He's an uh, animator, 3D, 3D animator. And so it's a lot of detail work, and I'm just not detailed. Okay, I think that works. Yeah, I got a little, yeah. nope, okay, I thought there was an edge there, but there's not. I did order some prep salt today through Eastwood. I don't like paying their prices for that stuff, but I gotta have it. So, as I mentioned before, water's a little bit on the heavy side for this, and it can hide things, but I know that, so I'm being extra, extra fussy about it all. Yeah, looks good. That's gonna block out nice now when we get another coat of primer on there. So I'll shoot this down here, shoot that there. Definitely gonna be shooting this here and all of those edges again, just to get things covered up. Uh, anywhere it's not yellow, I'm gonna go over it. Uh, just to fill it in, sand it one more time, and then, uh, whew, I'm tired. I'll do that tonight so it can dry and I can get back after it again tomorrow. So we'll get that here in a minute. Okay, just so you can get a gander. It's really hard to see, but if you watch those light tubes and those fluorescent lights, look how much better that is. It's just the edges now. So a couple coats of primer and some block sanding, that's going to be just outstanding. But frankly, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody else do this that's a body guy, but this is my thing. This is the way I get them flat. I said I've never been trained, so I don't know. Used to rely on my fingers. I think it's good. A couple coats on there and then block that thing out, we're going to be golden. Just found another flaw. See that right there? See if I can get my finger up there. Right there. Little teeny scratch. Glad I discovered that. I was wiping it down. I went, what the heck is that? So there's a little teeny scratch in it right there. It's hard to focus on it. Got my finger in there. It'll help. Yeah. Get the light just right. Anyway, I think you saw it before. There's the, right there, right at the end of my finger. There's a little teeny scratch right there. Here it is. So we're going to sand that out. I can just block that out, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I changed my mind. Decided to use a paint stick instead with a little bit of 220 on it. That'll cut that down better, make it flat. I'm going to remind myself, I'm going to have two more coats of primer here. I don't need to be two. There we go. That's pretty good. I don't need to be too uh, passive on this. I can get after it. When it gets this close to being done, I always get probably too conservative. There we go. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to use just a touch more. Okay, it's gone. That one's gone, that one's gone, that one's gone. Okay. All right, I think we're golden. Let's get some primer mixed up and get this thing shot. Wipe it down one more time here with a damper egg. <coughs> Get 
think I'd have a clean, damp rag. There we go. I knew I had one here somewhere. I don't want it really wet. Just a little moisture to take the dust off. Let's go up there. One question that you might have is, how come I'm touching everything with my hand? Aren't I worried about oils off my hand getting in there and causing contamination or problems? There's a little pot liquor still a little up right there. <clears throat> the answer to that is no. When you've been in this dust um, and you've been in the water, your hands are just dry as can be. There's no oils in them at all. Well, I won't say at all, but uh, for what I'm doing here, I'm not that worried about it. If I was going to be top coating, I'd be going over it with Prepsol one last time, of course. And so any oils that might possibly have been in my hand would be gone. I'm not using a stick on this. It's got a curve there. And so I want that to form. There we go. To feel it in the rag. There we go, it's gone. That clued me into it. It wasn't just the feeling of the, now I can feel that and that's just the surface. But uh, different porosity there. Oop, what's on there? Oh, I spit. I thought there was some oil on there or something. So, I know this is a little bit more of a long drawn out thing here, but I want you to see the tediousness of the process. So. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Dry this thing down a little bit more and uh, we'll get it. Um, sure you blow off the cracks. I realize you're pointing down a little bit here. Sorry about that. There we go. Some of this will probably be in and out and you'll never see it, but hood comes over this about an inch and there's, I think that's why I didn't block that out of there it's minor and it's right in the in the edge of the hood you get in an inch oh, there's a spot right there hey. let's uh, check that with a new piece of 320 and see what we get we'll use a long board on that this stuff. Oh yeah, we'll spot right there. Well, what you know about that? And 
got to get that wet and see what we got. Feels better now. A couple coats of primer on there and another block, it should be golden. It's very minor. Not that big a deal, but it's close to the hood too, so it's not going to be real obvious, but I just, if I know it's there, I better fix it. Well, that's interesting. It's fine now. Mm. Actually, safe towels. I'm starting to run out of blue towels too. Material I have squirreled away in this place. Whenever I do a job for a customer, I always make sure I buy plenty of product because I don't want to run out. And so then I end up with a half a quart of this left or a half a quart of that left. Works nicely. I get a lot of nice product on my shelves for stuff like this. So, oh, it's gonna drive me nuts. It's gone. I know it is. You saw it yourself, but I can feel that spot putty right there, and it's a different texture. <laughs> Every time I go over it. All right, what do we got here now? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I can live with that. Yep, very nice. The panel isn't perfectly flat. It's got a bit of a scoop in it this way. So. Uh, yeah, it's going to be respectable. I'm not going to worry about that. Okay. I think we're ready to shoot this thing. I said that a few minutes ago, didn't I? This was a daily driver. I wouldn't be doing all this. Okay, that was sweat from my hands now. That wasn't good. Sit there, held my hand against it. Okay, we're good. This rag has got just a little bit of moisture on it. All right, let's get that primer mixed up and get this done. I'm getting tired. Okay, I really want you to see this here, what this looks like now. It's wet. A little orange peely, but I want you to see how that how good that looks. Very minor imperfections. Right there. Let's see where is it? Right there. You can see just a little bit. That's gonna block out of there perfectly. So we're good. This over here now is looking really good. Hope you can hear me okay through the mask. And of course, we've got this all touched up down here. So this is good to go for today. All right. All right so you guys got a double shot today. Uh, we did an overview of the 68 GTS on another episode, and uh, we spent a lot of time working on this driver's side fender. Um, it's probably in better shape right now than the one out there. Of course, this needs to dry up and be blocked again. I did notice a little flaw in that one when I was moving it earlier. Uh, I'm going to have to fix that tomorrow, but... Not the end of the world. There's always some other thing you're going to find when you're doing this stuff. So anyway, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I don't take that for granted. If you would, spread the word. Tell your friends. Get them to subscribe. Get them to uh, follow this. That would be outstanding. I think there's a lot of things here that people might find interesting. So I just want to get the word out. And uh, really appreciate you taking the time. So uh, until the next episode, probably tomorrow. Be safe out there, as long as this quarantine and this uh, pandemic is going on. Stay healthy. Well, even after that, stay safe and healthy, too. <laughs> but uh, 
Thanks for watching so much. I really do appreciate it. Have a great night. Rock on.